Hi, my name is Judy Van Coyman, and you're watching Life Issues. My guests are Liz Benson and Jen Polina. Welcome, both of you. Thank you. Thanks and, for having us. And this month's show is about women in business. Liz, I'm going to start with you. What is your title? I'm the Directing Manager of Clear Path Collaborations. Um, I'm also uh, a life coach. I'm an executive life coach and a certified coach and a skills practitioner of CIQ, which is Communication Intelligence. Okay, great. And how long have you been a life coach? So my background is in uh, psychology and counseling, and in that realm, I had done a lot of life coaching since 2002 in various different uh, ways. But as a professional coach, executive um, and certified uh, CIQ coach, only for a little less than four years. Okay, cool. And can you please give us the definition of life coach? Yep, a life coach is somebody who helps people um, find out what they really want in life and to move them in that direction. Not, not to move them, but to help them to find that, to find their best life, especially when they're stuck and they have issues and stuff like that. So a, a life coach basically is to help people to find their best life. Okay. And Jen, what is your title? So my title is financial advisor, and I'll elaborate on that a little more throughout the show. Okay, great. And how long have you been doing this profession? So I started in the financial services industry tw a little over 28 years ago, right out of college. Mm -hmm. And I worked for several investment companies in Boston, mostly in the compliance area. And then after my second son was born, I stayed home with my kids for about 10 years. And when I was ready to get back into the workforce full time, I really wanted to find a role where I was having a direct impact on my clients' lives. And sometimes I think of it as a, like it's the teaching profession. There's very few roles out there that have a direct impact. Mm -hmm. And a teacher, they may not see the, the impact they're having on, their, on the children's lives. They're just being, being a role model. But then in the future, when the child is grown, they'll see what they did. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with what I'm doing, I'm helping my clients to reach their goals. And we may not see the results right away. But it's so rewarding mm -hmm. down the road when they say to me, thank you so much. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't have been mm -hmm. able to retire. Now, I would have still been working. For mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you please give us a definition of, of financial um, Yes, and also, yeah, so I started um, with Edward Jones also, just to go back to your last question. So it's been seven, it'll be seven years in January since I've been a financial advisor. And the definition is really, I help my clients to achieve their long-term financial goals. And everyone's goals are different, so it may be planning the retirement that they've always envisioned or perhaps saving for their child's education. So it varies from client to client. Okay, great. And Liz, what is a certified practitioner of conversational intelligence? <laughs> Conversational intelligence. It's a, it's a type of coaching that leverages neuroscience um, that helps to um, broaden my, I'm nervous, forgive me. <laughs> no, okay. it, it, it's the power of leveraging neuroscience to, to, to create um, a lasting and profound change of transformation in an individual life, in a team, or in an organization itself. It's, um, it's, it's, it's wonderful in the sense that, for example, this is the difference. When you think of a goal in the natural realm of things, you think of a pass or a fail a beginning or an, an end. But, when, but in CIQ, we think of a goal as an aspiration. An aspiration is a dream. It's, it's something that you look, look forward to and that you really want to achieve. And you can have goals and strategies within that aspiration, but it's not a pass or a fail because every time that you don't reach a milestone, it's a stepping stone or a lesson to help you to go forward. And that's the difference with that kind of coaching. Okay, great. And what is a certified executive coach? Executive coach is more about leadership. It's about helping leaders to advance, if that's what they are looking for. It's also remedial coaching, which is all about those things in a leader's life that might derail him. Um, it's also about building culture uh, within an organization, a healthy culture, if the culture is not healthy, or building teams. So it's more about professionals, um, and leadership building. Okay. 
And what is Distinguished Toastmaster? So I've been in to I was in Toastmasters International for 15 years. And the highest achievement that you can get in Toastmasters is what's called the Distinguished Toastmaster. And basically it means it's excellence in leadership. You, you do a lot of mentoring. You do a lot of coaching. Um, you learn to present well. And then you learn skills to, to teach other people or to I could actually part of the things that I do as a coach, as a specialty, is to help people to learn how to present, how to present themselves, how to project their voice, mm -hmm. and, and all that kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. so congratulations on it that. It has a lot to do with where I am right now, that 15 years. So. Yeah, Thank great. You. And Jen, what is the process that you um, take your clients through? Yes, yeah, so at Edward Jones, we have, it's a five-step process, really, which is really, t initially, it's two face-to-face -face appointments with my clients, ideally face-to-face. -face. If they live a distance, yeah. it could be a web conference yeah. in this day and age. So step one is really my understanding where they are today, what they've done so far towards that goal. And step two, which all step one and two both take place in the first appointment, it's understanding where they want to be, what their goals are. So really, it's what's most important to them. And then step three, is me going back and using an established process to help my clients build a personalized strategy to achieve their goal. And then I come back to them in appointment two, which is step four, and I give them that plan, that process to get there. And step five is me partnering with them throughout their lives to make sure they stay on track and don't get derailed from their goals. Okay, very interesting. It's, yeah, it sounds very, very similar to what I do with my clients. Uh, so I'm, only I'm not dealing with finances, so it's really kind of neat. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes right. I feel like what I do and what you do, we're both coaching people it's, in a we way. Totally yeah, we totally are. We totally are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and Jen, what is women and inclusion leader? Okay, so yeah, good, great question. So that's something that the firm created back in the year 2000. And it's because the industry that I'm in, is it just happens to be male dominated. So the majority of the financial advisors at the firm are men, and not only at Edward Jones, but really you know, at all financial services firms. So they have in each region, there's a volunteer women inclusion leader. So I am the women and inclusion leader for the Boston area. We also have a diverse inclusion leader who does this similar to what I do. So there's two parts to my role. The first part is I want to make sure that the women feel connected in the region and feel included because we don't, since it's such a small percentage, we don't want to lose any of them. So I plan a lot of just social events for them. I also plan business building circles where we have somebody come in and teach us something. And then the other part to my role is trying to bring more women into the firm. So I work with the talent acquisition team to um, help with that. And one good thing is in the Boston area, it's just more diverse than other parts of the country. So we are higher in my region for the percentage of women than nationally. So at one point we were close to 30%, but ideally we'd like to be 50. We just, because we're growing so fast, our region just split and we lost a few women. So we're down to about 22%, but we'll get back up to 30. Yes, somebody with your leadership, definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and. Jen, how do you go about working with individual investors and business owners? Okay, so as I mentioned that five-step process, I really do that with anyone that comes in first because I want to understand what's most important to them, you know, and then I'll use that established process to help them create their personalized strategies to get to their goals. And then I'm going to partner with them throughout their life to keep them on track. But then some other tools that I use when I'm working with people is anyone that comes to me they, even if they're not a client yet, if I'm just helping them, if they come to me and they want a second opinion, I have them fill out a risk profile. And it's just, it's like a test in school. It's a multiple choice, six <laughs> questions. And I walk them through it. And it just helps me to understand how safe or risky their investment should be. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to put them in something where they saw their statement and they couldn't sleep that night because it went down more than they're comfortable with. So I just, I tailor everything to each client. Okay, really. great. And Liz, how do you help people design their roadmaps to success? Can I, before I answer that, could I just comment yes, of on? Course. Jen did a, a presentation at a meeting that I was at um, regarding this, and we talked afterwards about how she conducts 
herself with her clients. And the one thing that I really, really loved about our conversation was the safe part of it, was that she was very careful about the risk, and yet, and yet she was open to taking those risks, but she was also really working with me and helping me to understand that, you know, we're going to be, take care of you uh -huh. and make sure that things are going to be okay. So yeah. I really appreciate that. Oh, about thanks. You. Yeah, I can't it remember if I gave you the handout or not, but I give everyone a handout that kind of shows what to expect from yeah. your portfolio. And it's not just what they put in their portfolio, but just based on how risky it is. Yeah, so. it's really great. I, I do have that portfolio. Oh, okay. I'm glad <laughs> anyway, you have so I'm sorry. Could you repeat the question? Yes, of course. How do you help people design their roadmaps to success? Okay, so people come to me and they usually have a, a pain point or something they're trying to move through or maybe, maybe they have an illness in their life or they lost their job and they're transitioning into a new position. So they come and what we do is, first of all, I stand with them under their umbrella. So imagine it's raining out mm -hmm. and you have your umbrella and the client has their umbrella. Mm -hmm. You put your, your umbrella down and you stand under their umbrella, which is really standing under re their reality. And you lean in, taking my biases and my judgments, putting them back here and really listening, deep listening to the client to really hear what they're saying. Once we do that, then we can begin to do what I call a deep dive exploratory, where we do mind mapping, we do spider graphs and stuff, and we focus on what it is that they're there for. What are they trying to find out? What are they trying to discover? Many times, a client will come to me having a particular thing in mind that they want to work through, and by the, on the other side of the discovery um, time that we have together, all these things that were invisible become visible and they realize, wow, that's what I really need, not that. And so that's all part of that process. Once we get there, and like Jen said, it's like this five-step process, mm -hmm. but it's probably not totally five for me. Once we get there, um, we decide what we want to work on first and we develop a strategy um, in a plan. And first of all, we ask, I ask them, what is your aspiration? What is it? What, what is the bar? Where do you want to go with this? And a lot of times they're, they're, they feel very closed in. They don't feel like can, they can reach that. I said, well, mm -hmm. let's, let's think about that. And so we'll begin a strategy and we'll begin to develop a roadmap to get there. So we have the aspiration and we have the structure, which is the goal and the strategy within the aspiration. Okay, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is you. so similar to what I do. It and then, is. And it it's is so true. you're the perfect person for it because you're so compassionate and the fact that you're standing under their umbrella <laughs> yes. and really listening yeah. to them. Thank you. That's so important. Yeah, you've yeah. heard me talk to you. Yes. Mm. Okay. And Liz, what is transitional and trauma recovery coaching? Okay, so again, transitional coaching um, can be anything from someone losing their job or having an illness and now they got to have a whole new life. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're, they want to do. They could be fighting depression. So that kind of coaching, again, we go through the same type of process, but we really focus on some, some other things. A lot of neuroscience, sonomic intelligence, uh, which is like biology of the body, which has to do with memory. Um, long-term memory, short-term memory, and this thing called implicit memory, which has to do with neuroscience. Implicit memory is, is things that we do. It's not knowing knowledge, like ABCs, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Implicit memory is those things that we do automatically because we needed to protect ourselves. We, our body was so uh, crafted so that it takes care of us. But implicit memory can stop us as an adult. What worked for us as children can stop us as an adult. And so transition and trauma coaching really uh, speaks to a lot about what has gone before, where are we now, and where we want to go. Now, the trauma coaching, which I'm actually I'm studying a lot of this stuff right now, the trauma coaching, um, I'm working with clients who have had abortions, for example, and they're dealing with post-trauma, either trauma that they've dealt with years ago and now they're recognizing it, or trauma that they're having right now. Um, or it could be someone, uh, for example, who had an abusive childhood, um, and now they're adults, mm -hmm. and now they're recognizing that that's holding them back, or that they know something's holding them back and they don't know what it is, but it has everything to do with the trauma. And a lot of times the trauma is not just between our ears, but it's also we get triggered in our body when we have trauma. So that type of coaching 
is a little bit different because we spend a lot more time. It's usually a, a lengthier time of coaching. It can be anywhere from nine months to two years, really. And, and it's just going through a, project, a process of looking at the perspectives and uh, in the behaviors, understanding what those are, uh, recognizing the things that are invisible, helping them to see. And then uh, there's also calming techniques because you know when you experience trauma, um, there's a lot of stuff that happens. So when you're working with the coach, you could get triggered into that trauma. And so there's a number of different exercises, breathing exercises, this tapping. Mm -hmm. There's another different number of different things that we do in session that helps them to be able to let go of that, that old thought and bring them into a new place. So I don't know, does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. So, okay. so it's, it's, a, it's a deeper work, but, I, but frankly, because I had my own trauma in my own childhood, I love that work. In fact, mm -hmm. can I just tell you this one thing? So when I was 14 years old, I was right in the middle of my own trauma as a child. Um, I started journaling then. Someone taught me to journal. And I cut a picture out, and I put this, uh, it was a picture of a girl. And when I looked at this girl, mm -hmm. it reminded me of the fear and the uncertainty that I was feeling then as a 14-year-old as a child. And underneath that picture, I cut out something else, and it said, God, please help me to, to reach out to those who may be just as scared as I am. And, and, and suddenly, as I took this communication IQ course, this, this uh, CIQ course, I suddenly realized here I am 60 years later, or not 60 years later, 50, 50 something years later, and I'm now entering in, that was my 14 year old frightened, uncertain self, putting out an aspiration into the world that I wanted to help others mm -hmm. who may have been just as scared as I am, mm -hmm. and here I am now 60, mm -hmm. and, and I'm doing that work. I'm helping others who were just as scared as I was. Mm -hmm. That makes me very, very excited to be a coach. Yeah, too. yeah I'm Definitely. passionate about that. And Liz, what is coaching that builds pathways to success? Basically, it's 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 about strategizing. Um, it's about discovering what your greatest aspiration is, and then strategizing to get there. That's what it is. It's it's all that we talked about already about the process, and then it's about looking at the what's what's possible that you didn't think was possible mm -hmm. and then creating strategies like i said we have structure inside the aspiration so you create that that structure where you set up a goal you set up strategies and milestones mm -hmm. and accountability and and then you begin the process a tra it i think it's more transitional transformational i mean than anything else when you are on the path to success even with business and w women in business, I think women carry a lot. We do a lot, we multitask a lot. And I think that it's interesting that that when we're looking through our success and we're, we're on that path of success, we are going through a transformational process that causes us to be elevated in spirit, in mind, in body, in emotion. So that's what it has to do with, I think, a transformational journey. Okay, great. And Jen, what are your personal interests? Okay, so really, my favorite thing to do is to spend time with my family. Mm. So my husband Ron and I will be celebrating our 25th wedding anniversary next year. And then my boys are 19 and 17. So I feel like before I know it, they're going to be off on their own. So I just try to, we try to plan one or two family trips a year. Because with teenagers, that's really the only way you can have quality exactly, time with them. Exactly. When they're home, they're just on their mm -hmm. electronics. So I do that. But then other than the time that we're traveling, really, I'm more of a homebody. Like my ideal weekend would be a chilly fall or winter weekend where I could just stay home and cook. I love to cook, mm -hmm. cook for my family, and maybe just play board games, do yeah. puzzles, things like that. And then I also, I love to go for hikes with my dog and just get out in nature. So I have a Bernice mountain dog, so she loves hills and hiking. So I love to do that also. Okay. What about volunteer work? Yeah, so I do, um, I've had numerous roles. So. Um, a, a lot of roles in my church over the years, different things. And then um, I was, I had a missions, um, I was director of the Bread and Roses mission where a soup kitchen in Lawrence, we would supply the meal once a month. Mm -hmm. So I did that for about 13 years. And now 
I'm involved with the Alzheimer's Association. Edward Jones is the national presenting sponsor, the first ever national presenting sponsor for the Walk to End Alzheimer's. And my mom suffered from dementia for nine years and mm -hmm. she passed away last year with the disease. I'm sorry. So I, um, oh thanks. So it was just, it was so special to me that my company mm -hmm. chose to take that yeah. as their role. So I got involved right away awesome. and I, I've had a team for the past four years and yeah. I do, I'm on the walk committee so I plan the, nor the Northeastern Massachusetts walk mm -hmm. every year. Awesome, great. And what advice would you give working women? Okay, so really it's very important to take an active role in your finances. Uh, a lot of the time if a woman's married, it just seems to be the old school way, but you know, the man might do all the finances and the woman might take a back seat. Things are changing today. Mm -hmm. But the statistics actually show that between 80 and 90% of women are gonna have to be in charge of the finances and for their family at some mm -hmm. point in their lives. So it's either you know, they may be single or it may be due to divorce or a death and the thing is, so women, you know, the, the statistics show women, the lifespan of a woman is longer than a man. So even if a woman is married, at some point, you know, she may outlive her husband. And all of a sudden, she'd have to take on a role she's not comfortable with. So I would say get involved early and don't go at it alone. It's like, you know, you wouldn't try to diagnose a disease yourself or perform mm -hmm. surgery yourself. You'd seek a medical professional. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with this. Really have a financial advisor help you, you know, even if it's just to give you a second opinion, to um, just make sure you're doing it right and that you're going about it correctly. Okay. Great, thank you. And Liz, what are your personal interests? <laughs> Very similar to Jen. <laughs> I, I love spending time with my grandchildren. I have four of them. Oh, I've been wow. married, I've been married 40 years. Mm -hmm. and, um, and one of my favorite things to do is to spend an afternoon with my husband sitting on the couch, mm -hmm. watching old movies. That's mm -hmm. one of our favorite things to do. Mm -hmm. we all, I love being out in nature. It grounds me. So I do a lot of that. And as you know, I was a professional uh, oil painter for 25 years and I still enjoy painting. So those are some of the things that I really enjoy doing. Awesome, great. And what would you um, give um, working women? I love that question mm -hmm. because when I'm when I'm um, working with professional women, there's one thing that always comes up, <laughs> and this is this is my advice: be curious and discover what gives you joy, what brings mm -hmm. you joy, and do as much of it as possible. This is why. Joy promotes a healthy lifestyle, it boosts your immune system, it fights stress and pain, and it supports longevity. And as women, we're constantly multitasking. Mm -hmm. Even when we're not working, we're home and we're doing other things. We rarely play. We rarely let our little inner child out and play. I'll give you a perfect mm -hmm. example. I have one client. and. And I said to her, what is your joy? You need to do as much as, it, as you, she says, I don't know what my joy is. And then suddenly she had this light bulb moment. Mm -hmm. And she says, you know what I really love to do? I, I love to refinish furniture. She says, I just need to find a place to do it. So we, we worked it out so she had a place to do it. And one day I was with her and she says, Liz, she says, everything just melts away. She says, when I'm doing this, mm -hmm. I just that's love it. Great. And, and I think that that's what mm -hmm. women in business especially, mm -hmm. Successful women need that time. They need to let that inner child out. And but you know what? A lot of times we have to discover our inner child. We have to discover our joy. What gives us joy? What gives me joy is being out in nature, and just watching the leaves blow, mm -hmm. and that the buds coming out that seem to say, "Look at me! Look at me!" <laughs> when the wind blows, you know, whatever it is, find out what it is and make time. Another client of mine. Um, uh, she's a professional, she's a psychotherapist, and she wasn't taking any time for herself at all, at all. Mm -hmm. And so I said, how can you find time for yourself? So she, re she arranged her schedule that she had moments during the day where she could just look out the window and look at nature, or just sit quiet and breathe mm -hmm. deeply. And it's revolutionized her life. She, she says, Liz, you're not going to believe what I did this week, you know, and, and that's what joy does. Mm -hmm. It allows you to have a full mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. Great. So. Thank you. And 
Jen, if anyone has any questions or would like more information, can you mm -hmm. please give us your contact info? Yeah, sure. So my email is jennifer.polina, P-O-L-L-I-N-A, at edwardjones.com. People could also go to the website, edwardjones.com, and just put my name in, or my office is in Burlington, Massachusetts, put in my location, and okay. they can email me through there. All right, great. And Liz, can we have your contact info? Sure. Your email? So I'll give you two. One is uh, my, my email, which is dove, like the bird, haven, studio, dot, eb, e as in Edward, b as in boy, at verizon, dot net, or they can contact me at my website, which is www.clear.com. Path collaborations with an S dot com. Okay, great. I'm sorry, but that's all the time that we have. Thank you both for all you do for those in need. I love to hear your thoughts and suggestions. Please send them to life issues tv at gmail.com. And remember, live each day to the fullest and celebrate life. Mm -hmm.